Welcome, Verastructors, to another couple discusses. This is a good one. This is so exciting. We're going to be talking about the birth of our newest child, which happened a matter of weeks ago. Birth presents this wonderful opportunity for us as Verastructors because it shows how simple Verastruct is in concept, but in execution is quite difficult. And the reason why is because there's so many middlemen that we've appointed mm -hmm. in society mm -hmm. um, that we don't need. There's no need for them. So birth is one of the best examples of this. There's a bunch of middlemen and women <laughs> and they get in the way and they make things more complicated and they confuse things and they take things that are not big deals. It yeah. makes them even worse. And that includes um, any sickness that you might have. It includes whether you're of a particular race here in America and all sorts of other things mm -hmm. and just amplifies it. So Verastruct is about taking things that are complicated and making them more simple. You did in a recent video talked about how this is the role of women. Yeah. If you could break it down into one thing, it's the birthing and raising of children. Yeah, I mean, and it's our biological role. And so it feels really obvious to me that in our biological role, when, we're, when we are fulfilling that, we are going to feel the most accomplished. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, there's a lot. Fulfillment. That's yeah. probably the best word. I really do believe that because this is our biological role on this earth that we are going to get the most fulfillment out of doing these actions and I've especially um, felt that as I've um, birthed in a physiological way that is simple and true and um, cuts out the middleman. So there's a huge point for why Verstruct thinks birth is very important. And it's an important element of life and of family and of everything that's important and living, more importantly. So let's get into it because this latest birth is a wonderful kind of healing moment for us as a couple from our last two births. So this is our third child now. Mm -hmm. and it's this wonderful healing moment in a lot of different ways more from our first birth because we need yeah. to heal more from our first birth yeah of our first child but also kind of a healing moment for the second birth as well yeah should we talk a little bit about that first birth uh-huh so basically i had found midwives and i as many people do with any kind of care provider, is I deified them. I thought they could do no wrong. And although I was starting to listen to all these birth stories telling me that midwives were not perfect, I thought, well, certainly not my midwives. And all these red flags were coming up throughout my pregnancy and I ignored them. And even though I learned about unassisted birth and felt in full alignment with it, I couldn't allow my people-pleasing mind to accept that that was the path I actually wanted to take and I didn't want to fire my midwives and I didn't want any bad blood with anybody in my family and my friend circle with the midwives with you I was in people pleasing consciousness well, and you fully. were you were in a difficult situation because I actually was 100% for us just going home and having the child right. whenever any issues started coming up I was like that's fine Mm -hmm. Be nice to have the midwives there. Yeah. Be nice to have other people involved. But if they can't be involved, that's their decision. Yeah. Birth is still something that we can do ourselves. Which is so cool. This isn't common for men to be so... For I mean, I think a lot of men are actually really accepting of the fact that birth works wonderfully and can be done at home unassisted. But Micah was very quick to do some research and accept it and respect my wishes which is really great. And because I was respecting your wishes, you know, the moment that the midwives started saying, hey, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, I accepted that 
that that was the route that you were going that yeah. you were going to take that was nice the route with them um that's what was necessary for me to learn the lesson I needed to learn. But I also gave you a way out if you wanted to. Which was awesome. <laughs> Most men are like, yeah, yeah, go to the hospital, go to the hospital. All the right. all of my family members were like, yeah, go to the hospital. Um, so but to, long story short, Yeah. sorry. It's um, okay. The baby was a little small. They thought really small. They, about two pounds smaller than he ended up being. They were concerned about his position, that he was breech, and they were also worried about the heart rate that was presented on the fetal monitor. And <laughs> needless to say, but none of those were true. They were all observations made with inaccurate machines were made with assumptions. And the only thing that was accurate really was his positioning, which I had no fear around. I knew that I could give birth to him vaginally if I so wished to. And um, so that was really, that. and I, I knew intuitively that he was gonna be breached the entire pregnancy. I kept saying he was going to be and when he was, I was like, all right, let's have this baby at home. And they're like, uh, no, 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 no. They were worried about the placenta. Yeah. That it would, might have been calcified. And it wasn't. Um, so we eventually ended up in a situation that's very all too common in pregnancy and birth that if you don't continue with treatment X, uh, your baby will die. And which is a straight up lie. It's it's not productive and not helpful in the least. And you can't know that. We got into more detail in in other videos, and you can find those linked below. So if you'd like to see a more in depth story, this is to help get a sense of why we needed to heal because we eventually had um, cesarean section, and that was very traumatizing for us in lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. But the biggest way was that all of those were lies. The things that we just named were lies. And we knew conceptually that they were lies. Yeah. But we didn't know concretely. Yeah. Because the next birth that we had was... Oh, yeah. So it was um, unassisted. I'm really glad that I chose that route. So, so, so glad. Um, and I don't know how to explain it. It was so, it was so incredibly simple. I mean, I went through that pregnancy. We, um, you know, my labor started, I had had prodromal labor off and on for the last several weeks. Mm -hmm. And once my labor started, I was in the zone and I was full of joy because in my other birth, I never got the experience of being in labor. So I was having a blast. So the other side of this, the stuff that we thought was still possibly be an issue is just has slight anemia, a particular type of anemia. And we were also worried about um, the fact that she's had, in, that you've had endometriosis. Yeah. And that might contribute to um, any kind of bleeding that might occur Another reason that during pregnancy. the bleeding was something that was brought up to me a lot is because my uterus is um, has a little, it's called a septate, and it's just a little tiny thing, very tiny, just a couple centimeters, yeah. but it makes it a little slightly heart-shaped. It's, it's like two centimeters. It's not even, yeah, It's I think it's barely two centimeters. It's it, barely in the designation of... of Septate. Yeah. Um, I think the other one is arcuate, and mm -hmm. then it's bicornuate. And it's not bicornuate, it's barely septate, it's practically arcuate. But yeah. Um, but we've never gotten an exact measurement. Um, so we don't know precisely, but it, it appears to be negligible. But yeah. needless to say, that puts you in the high risk category. Oh. Every yeah. single one of those puts you in the <laughs> so high-risk right. category, and so does if the baby presents in the breech position and um, lots of other elements. Yeah. And unfortunately, also being 
a, a woman of color mm -hmm. does put you in the high risk category and for basically not, no reason. Yeah, because <laughs> they could say I'm, I'm not high risk as an African American woman, but... But they'll say it for other things yeah. that that is just code. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... And we've, and we've talked about that before, but I, just, just to go into it a little bit, in 2017, I think it was 85% of recent graduates thought that African Americans feel pain differently than Caucasians, medical That's students. So freaky, so, 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 so freaky. I, so the one thing that I do say is if you are going to consider race as a serious issue today, I think birth is one of the top ones to consider. It, it literally is the difference between um, life and death for a lot of women. Um, Women in New York, for instance, if they're African American, 13 times more likely to have a cesarean section. And if you have cesarean section, um, sepsis is a high probability, and that is the leading cause of death, yeah. maternity death in the United States. And we have higher than basically m most countries in the world, including, especially including third world countries. So just to put that in perspective, like we said, you, you introduce middlemen and it makes everything worse. Complicated, 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 and messy. So it was beautiful. I think we healed um, from a lot of those in the second birth. Yeah, I'm also RH negative. That's another way. There you go. <laughs> I risk now you know everything. I'm just a very um, risky person to be giving birth, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> If you're using the math and the statistics yeah. and, and uh, recent <laughs> college test textbooks for medical school. Yeah, I think just even, you know, and once again, VBAC, lots of people think, oh, you can't have a VBAC. Exactly. And certainly not alone. What if your uterus, you know, explodes? <laughs> or or um, where ruptures. you were sutured. What if that comes undone? Right. There's a lot of worries. So and many. We went into it not having that many worries just because of how traumatizing the first one was. We thought maybe this will present other problems, but not those ones. So we can heal from those. And I think we healed from not only those, but also some of the concerns that people have with... That they projected with onto me. With unassisted VBAC. Oh, right. Um and of, of particular conditions that one might have. Yeah. But at one point you did faint for a little while mm -hmm. and you did go unconscious for a little bit and it probably was a symptom of shock as opposed to blood loss, but it probably was a little bit blood loss as yeah, well. Yeah, so I'm, I, I've, I'm pretty aware of why it happened. Um, because yeah, we're both pretty aware it was most likely retained plus or um, it was the the placenta needed to come out and I wasn't pushing it out. So I, once I finally got it out, I was able to wake up much better and be more alert um, because the birth was able to finally conclude. That conclusion needed to happen. My body needed that. It was about four and a half hours long, and it was really really powerful. And it was so healing for me to just be able to be in labor and truly love it. I loved being in labor. I was yelling things like, this is awesome, and this is cool, and this is so hard, and release and soften. And I was giving myself little motivational speeches, and Micah was just holding my hand and giving me water. And it was incredibly... Um, sweet to be held by you in that way because it was simple yeah i didn't need a lot from you <laughs> i just needed your presence that's really what what made the the difference in that in that birth she was a good weight um she was born a little after 40 weeks mm -hmm. so did not no preterm at all very normal stuff um, very normal stuff once again the placenta was great she did present as um, head down. Head down. Yeah. Um, and 
all went pretty well other than the time where you fainted and it appeared to be from the loss of blood which which did scare me and I did need to heal from apart from that it was glorious and peaceful and didn't take too long mm -hmm. but uh, wasn't too short mm -hmm. and certainly with this most recent birth we've we had maybe there are still some elements that we we can work through but it, fe it just felt like a really normal experience. It almost <laughs> felt like... It was hilariously normal. It almost felt like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep tonight. and But instead of sleep, it's go into labor. And instead of get a good night's rest, it's have a baby at the end. <sighs> and I think that's a very fitting metaphor for birth, ultimately, is that it's it's another... It's another part of it's another bodily function it's another part of life eating food drinking water breathing air mm -hmm. when you start <laughs> getting gloved hands involved in someone breathing air ah. you start running into problems <laughs> oh when you're gosh. when you're getting on a ventilator you know you know you're not doing so great because <laughs> because that's probably going to make it worse so this labor i it was, it was so, so fun. Me and Micah were cuddling on the couch. I fell asleep and when I, right when I woke up, a little bit of my water is released and I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I, you had uh, wet yourself? Yeah, I thought I had peed, which... Very common. I mean, it was only 39 weeks and I, I had made up this little story that there's no way I could go into labor before 40 weeks. Last time it was after 40 weeks, so surely that would never happen and my nesting day was going to be the next day. So I've, I had been putting off cleaning the house for the entire weekend. Tuesday was gonna be nesting day, but Monday <laughs> night had other plans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I released some waters. I was in deep disbelief, but you had an inkling that something was up, so. Of course I did. So you were like, well, I'm going to go to bed. You yeah. wake me up when you're ready <laughs> to have the baby. <laughs> you basically said that, right? Something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I get a lot of flack for this, but it's like, I don't know about you, but most stories I've heard, the labor lasts six hours at least. And so I'm like, I'm going to go take a nap for two or three or four, and then I'm going to be around for the other two. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and by that point, your mom was coming over. So she was, she was coming over to help already. I called her for about 30 minutes while I was sitting on the toilet, very obviously about to go into labor, still not having contractions. And then it was... 30 minutes after I called her that I came in and got you. So it had, you were asleep for maybe about an hour. I didn't sleep very well. Oh, well, probably because I was yelling at my mom while sitting on the toilet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I had gotten some things ready and I was still in disbelief because my contractions weren't that intense. It was, when point, I started, no. it was when I started kind of growling that I came and got you. But it is clear that you have a high tolerance for the, for the first the the first contractions the first waves yeah you really do i guess so because yeah i was walking around getting quick. things done and so yeah so right when i started getting kind of growly after i woke you up and i told my mom to come i was growling quite a bit and having a hard time standing up and i was like all right so I had it. We got a tent for me to labor in, and oh, I was yeah. like, "I'm going in that the tent, nice. and then things are gonna get a little crazy." And you're like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I went in the tent, and things got crazy very fast. You always think you're like <laughs> wild and crazy, and you are, but not in your interactions with people. You're quite kind and considerate <laughs> in your interactions with people. You're like. Can you do this for me? And it's like, yeah, I could, I could do that. You don't like yell at people. You yell at the at the at the air. I yelled once at you, but not. It, it was for you. I was yelling for you. Yeah, that's when I was pushing. That feels good. That doesn't feel bad. <laughs> um, it's not like Micah. How dare you? It's like Micah, come check this out. Yeah. 
It's yeah. happening. Yeah, so it's funny. I <laughs> What I've been telling people is last time I was giving myself motivational speeches and this time I was giving myself an entire TED talk. Because I was just like, it was a continuous speech. Like I was talking through my contractions. I was talking through my rest times. And I was just on my hands and knees in that tent feeling so held and so cozy. Mm -hmm. And you were giving me water and you're giving me kisses on the head, which Mm -hmm. is so, so sweet. And um, I felt very whiny. Yeah, I think think us humans are so disconnected from our intuitions Mm -hmm. and not realizing how much they're related to the way the body feels Mm -hmm. and the emotions that we have Uh that birth just seems very foreign because it's all those things it's Mm -hmm. intuition it's feelings and it's emotions yeah all wrapped into one Mm -hmm. and so it's like oh no if i'm having emotions i must be having a bad time oh no if i feel if i'm clearly in my body Mm -hmm. you know that's creepy too Oh, um, so fun. Let alone the third one that I was saying. <laughs> emotions. No, uh, yeah, emotions in your in your body, and then intuition, yeah. which is just letting go and just letting it be. We want to control. <sighs> yeah. We want to abstract ourselves from our bodies, be be outside of our bodies, and then we want to um, be logical and objective. Well, it's so funny because in Bert. It, You know me, I like to have control. I like to know that things are in control. But when it comes to birth, I was in denial. And then once I accepted that I was in labor, I completely let go. I don't know why I'm so good at that, but it's a skill I have. And I was only in the tent for one hour, less than an hour. (laughs) And suddenly my body started pushing and I was like, surely this cannot be it. That's crazy. I'm getting towels. I'm doing stuff. I'm helping out. I'm getting some... Toast with a little bit of honey on it, (laughs) um, getting stuff, and all of a sudden, Micah, it's happening. It's like, okay, here I come. (laughs) And uh, and and she's in full on labor. Yeah, I was, I was telling you, I was pushing. Beautiful tent. And this, I had this long contraction that lasted like three minutes. Once. What was that about? That happens sometimes. Women will have really long contractions when the baby's about to come out. So it was like a three minute long contraction. The stuff you learned. And I felt, I, I just, I was just like, it's not ending. And you're like, <laughs> okay. And I'm like, <laughs> so either this is the nature of the labor then, or we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's gotta be one of those. It's so hard if that was consistently happening. Yeah, I thought it was consistent. Labor. But I was just like, you know what? You're whatever's great at accepting whatever's it. Whatever's happening is happening for some reason. Yes, right? it, it, yeah. it is always happening for a great reason. Great su- assumption to make, Vera Structor. Yeah. The nature um, of things is because it's a, it, it's supposed to be that way, not because so someone simple. came by and gave you a present or kicked you in the knees. So as I was pushing, <laughs> all of a sudden I felt the crowning, and last time... My daughter came out of me so quickly that I didn't yeah. feel the ring of fire. It was full fetal ejection reflex. And I didn't do any like intentional pushing this time either. So what are But those? it was slower. Fetal ejection reflex. So the ring of fire is... Right. So it's when the baby's head is crowning and it's when you are stretched to your biggest, basically. And it feels hot? For me, it felt like I was being torn apart (laughs) so not hot so yeah i mean it's like this yeah it doesn't feel hot it's almost like this just burning like it feels like you're getting an indian burn on your entire so it is hot i guess yeah yeah but like your skin is stretching so that's why it's stretching burn but but the the friction of the stretching is causing a burn indubitably because yeah that's indian burn is yeah 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 that's probably so what, do, what do people call Indian burns now? I know. That's what I was thinking as I said, said it. it was the like, stretching that... of the skin that we kids used to do to make it red. That's what it feels like. <laughs> and then the oh fetal gosh. ejection reflex, I think, is pretty... Yeah, pretty, fe- uh, fetal ejection reflex means that you're not, like, 
there's no directed pushing. You're not intentionally like saying, okay. I'm going to push my baby out now, or I'm going to use this contraction to push. Your body is just doing it. It's kind of like it's, if you're in a coma and you're mm -hmm. pregnant, you your body, the baby. you just have the baby. You yeah. don't have to like push the baby out. Your body right. does it for you. It's intu intuition, unconscious, mm -hmm. emotion. Yeah. It's, it's that part of, it's that part of the, of the body, right? Yeah. And that part of the brain that is not that part of the brain. It, it might. The body has intelligence. The body has intelligence. <laughs> That's probably And is that related, the fetal ejection reflex, is that related to, to this idea that the child births themselves to some degree? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in this I like case, that perspective that was a little different. Of, I like that perspective of it being a, a joint effort. Oh, absolutely. Of, of mother and child doing the birth process together. I mean, the child has to turn in certain ways and move in certain ways in order to get into the birth canal in the but, first place. But in this case... This case was very unique and so cool. She, she was breech. She was breech. And so, so when she was feet. crowning, it was feet. a bum. Well, it was a bum. Bum first. And a, and a foot. And Just a, foot. a bum and one foot. Um, and I felt her toes. So I had had this intense, crazy contraction. All of a sudden I feel her bum and her toes and then complete, just no more contractions, no. complete peace in yeah, my entire you, body. You were quite calm at that and point. And I was like, she's preach. Oh, I can yeah. feel her toes. And then I could feel that she was a girl. And I was like, she's a girl. And that's, I knew that she was a girl. We knew she was a girl very early on. It was really obvious for some reason. Some reason. Um, we'll sorry. see if that holds out true. Yeah, if we can be good at that forever, that'd be fun. Intuition is more intelligent than consciousness. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, so I was kind of narrating what was happening, but she pooped in my hand as I was feeling her. And she, both of her feet, once they dropped down, she put her feet on the ground and flexed her entire body. And I still hadn't had any contractions. Of course, when the rest of her body came out, her um, shoulders and head, that kind of hurt. You know, it was an intense feeling, but I wasn't having any contractions. She really just birthed herself. Mm -hmm. And once I... <laughs> she caught herself. <laughs> I caught her. <laughs> I, once I got her, um, I turned her around and she opened her eyes and smiled at us that's gotta be that was crazy that's gotta be a condition of the lighting in this in this scenario yeah because with our first birth we had to put a blank we put a blanket, put a blanket over our over family it, and he opened his eyes he opened his eyes was, and looked and and sat up he was crazy strong from the beginning he yeah he's a very strong child very dense <laughs> very dense very <laughs> strong <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's freaky how strong he is. But he opened his eyes with the blanket and then would close them and curl up yeah. with the light of the hospital. And so, yeah, we're, we're meant to birth at night. Yeah. No oh, lights. That's why our photos never turn out so <laughs> well. <laughs> so well is because at night. Yeah. So breach, a little bit smaller, a little bit earlier than 40 weeks. Um, that sounds familiar. She looks a lot like our first child. So funny. Girl version of our first boy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, the placenta was fine. Once again. One could say it was fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. A part of it was still inside of me for a while. Right. But my body um, got it out. Came out eventually. It's amazing. It wasn't retained pr it placenta wasn't retained in the way that most people That it was attached to the wall. It was yeah. definitely off, but it was still in the in the in the vaginal canal. So crazy. So cool. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just floored and amazed with life because it works. And I am this incredibly high risk birthing woman. Mm -hmm. And I have this incredibly high-risk baby, mm -hmm. and she did it perfectly. I did it perfectly. 
So it was like an hour of active labor and an hour of early labor or whatever comes before active labor. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't that intense to me. But um, yeah. Oh. It was simple. If you had told me like, hey, Micah, this is how simple mm-hmm. birth can be. Mm-hmm. Was this simple? And I can't imagine what we'll end up doing, you know? Yeah. Well, we're, we're planning on having more children. May we be blessed with them mm-hmm. um, and have that ex- these experiences again. But if you would have told me this is what it would be like is this last birth, I would have been like, that's, that's amazing. That's magical. Yeah, like, every I, time I tell the story, I feel like I'm like fabricating something and I'm like, right. I'm really not. Like, no. that's actually what happened. Mm-hmm. It was that simple. Fairstruct works. Simple and magnificent. It works to trust your body, Mm -hmm. to trust living beings, Mm -hmm. to trust the natural processes that have already been established on this earth because there is a degree of rightness to it that human beings cannot mimic or fabricate Mm -mm. or manufacture. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do... You're going to be manufacturing it with with failure and with problems, mm-hmm. and you're going to have to fill all those holes up. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep having our children unassisted, and some might be breached, some might be head down. I'll continue to have all of my little risks that mm-hmm. everybody's so afraid of, and I'm going to choose to trust over fear. Yeah. I know that if something comes up, I can get the help that I need. So long as the health industry actually does care about health Mm -hmm. to any degree, then you can come to them if you you feel legitimately have an issue. Yeah. So that's they have resources I can use in some situations for sure, and I'm grateful for that. So that, of course, is a worry because they're becoming less and less tolerant of health health oriented and more health in their style oriented. Mm. So yeesh, money, money, money. Thanks for watching. And if you got to this point, (laughs) like the video and subscribe to the channel. And free birth is unassisted feedback, whatever you want to call it, is an essential element of Verestruct and of a woman's role in life. And we'll keep putting out that type of content along with other content that you may like. You're a deep fountain of unique identity, Vera Structure. Have a lovely week.